Uh, today I am going to discuss the clinical application of enzyme. Uh, in the last lecture, discuss the enzymes under these headings, the role of enzymes as therapeutic agent or as a drug. Then we discuss the role of enzyme in diagnosis and prognosis of diseases. Then enzymes as tumor markers and then the role of enzyme in enzyme deficient disorders which are commonly called as in born errors of metabolism and the role of enzyme in these disorders. Today we will discuss the role of enzymes in bioanalysis. Bioanalysis means that when we have certain uh, uh, body fluids or we have a serum or we have a CSF for analysis of uh, any compound or substance of significance then in clinical laboratory in what capacity the enzymes are being used in clinical analysis or in bioanalysis the enzymes can be used as reagent they can be used as uh, indicators they can be used as chemical reactors then we will discuss the role of enzyme uh, in research and in the end we will discuss the industrial use of enzymes as I said earlier that in bioanalysis or in clinical laboratories the enzymes can be used in uh, various capacities. They can be used as reagent and when we say they are being used as labels it means they are being used as an indicator or they can be used as chemical reactor and we will discuss each of this enzyme uh, uh, function uh, with examples. Uh, the union of the enzyme chemistry and the field of immunology has benefited the modern clinical chemistry and those assays which utilize enzymes with antibodies or immunology they are called immunoassay and one of the most popular indicators which are being used in immunoassay are enzymes. So immunoassays which utilize enzymes, they are called as immunoenzyme linked immunosorbent assays or in simple we call them ELISA techniques or sometimes we call them as enzyme immunoassay. Enzyme which are used in ELISA includes horse radish peroxidase, alkaline phosphatase or glucose oxidase. Now this uh, figure uh, signifies the principle of the ELISA technique. Uh, first we apply the sample that can be a serum or that can be a CSF and this sample contain antigen that may be from a bacteria or it may be from a virus and antigens are usually protein in nature so these antigens binds to the surface. In the second step we apply an antibody enzyme conjugate. You can see the green color is of indicating the enzyme and the purple one is the antibody. So enzyme antibody conjugate gets attached to this an antigen and this antigen actually is a substrate. So that substrate and enzyme interaction converts a colorless dye into a colored product and that colored product can be measured by spectrophotometer and the amount of the colored product is proportional to the amount of antigen present in the serum. Now this picture will demonstrate to you the role of ELISA in assay of uh, HIV uh, antigen uh, estimation. You all are very well aware with the HIV virus that is the human immunodeficiency virus and it is responsible for the causation of a disorder that is called as AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Now this ELISA is also called Sandwich ELISA because here we use two antibodies which are linked to an enzyme. Now for uh, you are very well aware that HIV uh, this virus uh, code protein antigen and we then uh, prepare antibodies uh, in rabbit against this uh, HIV uh, uh, antigen that is called as the rabbit IgG and we also prepare another reporting antibody that is in the uh, goat that is called the goat IgG 
and that uh, this goat IgG is against the uh, rabbit antibody so it is uh, called as goat anti rabbit antibody this goat anti rabbit antibody is then linked with an enzyme that is called as a horse horse radish peroxidase so first of all what we do we apply the patient's uh, sample that is the serum on the poly polystyrene dish and we incubate it so that the antigen get attached to this dish in the second step we apply the rabbit igg which get attached to this antigen an antigen antibody reaction takes place in the third step we apply a conjugate of uh, goat anti rabbit igg to which horse radish peroxidase is get attached so and then there is an addition of the substrate for this enzyme peroxidase so peroxidase then convert, con converts a colorless substrate into a colored product and the amount of that colored product can be estimated as i told you earlier by spectrophotometer and the amount of that colored product is proportional to the amount of hiv antigen present in the serum now uh, this elisa technique can be used for the diagnosis of non infectious diseases as well as with the infectious diseases as far as the non infectious diseases are concerned it can be used for uh, harm estimation of hormones in endocrine disorders and uh, a number of disorders that are related to the drugs or it can be used for estimation of various serum components and for the estimation of the onco fetal proteins it it can be utilized for the uh, diagnosis of autoimmune disorders now as far as the infectious diseases are concerned it can be used for the diagnosis of uh, various bacterial viral mycotic or uh, parasitic uh, in infections uh, uh, infectious diseases Uh, so far we discussed the role of enzyme as indicator in uh, immunoassays that is in elisa technique here i can give you the example of uh, use of enzyme as reagent in various desktop analyzers uh, desktop clinical analyzers uh, nowadays if you go to the uh, shopping centers or malls or even in offices uh, the glucose cholesterol and tag can be estimated for screening purposes and for this estimation of glucose uh, and uh, these assays are being performed within few minutes and hardly it requires uh, a sample of 10 ml of the serum so in uh, estimation of glucose the enzyme which is used here as reagent is glucose oxidase now remember oxidase you are you have been through the uh, classification of enzymes of those oxidoreductases and you know the subclass of oxidoreductases uh, have one of the uh, subclass that is oxidases and oxidases they what they do they remove electron from the substrate and they produce hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide is being is a product in case of those reactions which are catalyzed by oxidases so when uh, that uh, strip where we apply the blood sample it is being uh, 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 covered with uh, enzyme glucose oxidase along with the coenzyme co substrate and the buffer and the serum sample provide the substrate and the water so what happens when uh, the blood sample is applied to that uh, strip uh, glucose by uh, is converted into uh, it is being oxidized to gluconolactone and hydrogen peroxide is produced then this hydrogen peroxide acts on a substrate that is orthotoluidine which is a dye and it convert this orthotoluidine into different colors depending upon the concentration of glucose present in the serum so he, here this enzyme is being used as a reagent uh, like glucose uh, cholesterol and tag that is the triacyl glycerol can also be estimated uh, by these desktop clinical analyzers 
within few minutes and here we can see that uh, the uh, desktop analyzer which is used for cholesterol estimation uh, it is being uh, having an enzyme cholesterol oxidase and then as, as I told you in the previous slide that oxidases they remove electron from the substrate and they add that electron to the molecular oxygen here you can see the substrate for cholesterol oxidase is cholesterol plus molecular oxygen so an electron is being removed from the substrate that is a cholesterol and cholesterol is converted into cholest 4 in 3 on 1 and the oxygen is being reduced to hydrogen peroxide again here the dye colorless dye is orthotoluidine and this peroxidase in the presence of hydrogen peroxide will convert that colorless dye into a colored dye similarly for estimation of triacylglycerol uh, the enzyme that will be used will be the lipase and this colored dye the amount of this colored product is proportional to the amount of cholesterol present in the serum of that patient uh, in this slide, I will discuss the role of uh, enzymes as chemical reactors. In pharmaceutical industries, a very cheap substrate, that is the cholesterol, is being uh, applied on the insoluble matrices. And those insoluble matrices, then they are being covered with enzyme. You can see here, that is the 11 beta hydroxylase. And this enzyme converts a very cheap substrate in a rapid stereo specific and economic ma manner into a very uh, uh, life saving drug that is called the prednisolone or corticosterone. So corticosterone and prednisolone they are the life saving drugs and by application of these enzymes with a low, uh, cheap substrate one can get uh, a life saving drug. Uh, this is another version of the uh, previous slide we just discussed and this uh, slide shows you the industrial application of enzymes. So industries utilizes enzyme for various uh, purposes. We, uh, we can see here that proteases are being used by many industries for skinning fish and for removing hair. Amylase has been used for the production of chocolate and syrups. Cellulose is being used for softening of vegetables and removing seed coats. And proteases, they are being added to the washing powder to remove protein stains. Lipases are being utilized to convert fats to fatty acids and glycerol. And simultaneously, amylase is being utilized to convert starch to glucose. You must have seen an advertisement on the TV that daag to achhe hote hain. Why daag to achhe hote hain? Because now it is possible to remove the stains due to blood or gravy because of the incorporation of these proteases in the detergents. And the detergents, they enhances their property of cleaning the clothes. And the term biological on soap powder packets reflects the incorporation of a protease. We just discussed the role of proteases in detergents and in soap. Proteases are also used by restaurants to tenderize meat, by brewers to eliminate haze formation in beer by bakers to degrade proteins in the dough to improve the texture of the bread and render it gluten free. Now this picture sh uh, shows you the use of enzyme as food and in food industry. Enzymes can be used in the meat packing industry. For example, papain which is a proteolytic uh, uh, in nature. So it hydrolyzes peptide bonds and thus it helps in tenderizing meat and beef. Enzymes have their role in manufacturing of cheese. Uh, example is renin. Renin is an enzyme which is found in the stomach and it converts milk protein casein to curd like calcium para uh, caseinate.
In beverage industry, papain is used to stabilize chill-proof beer. Yeast enzymes are also used in beverage industry. As far as the ice cream is concerned, lactate enzyme is used to prevent the formation of lactose crystals in ice cream preparations. Here we will discuss the role of enzyme for research and for diagnostic use. Because of their unique properties, enzyme act like a chemical reaction machines. And the purpose of enzyme in the cell is to allow the cell to carry out chemical reactions very quickly. As a result of this, the enzymes becomes the essential tools used in research of the molecular and cell biology. You all are very well aware that each DNA strand contains thousands of genes and we know that genes code for proteins. Gene cloning is a process by which we can make thousands of copies of specific sets of genes from a strand of DNA. And genetic engineering is the process of using gene cloning. What is cloning? Cloning is the making copies of DNA. Uh, specific sets of genes from uh, DNA strand. So genetic engineering is the process of using gene cloning and other genetic manipulations to isolate specific genes and then use these genes for research and other purposes. Like we know now we can uh, diagnose the inborn errors of metabolism only because of the this uh, uh, investigation at the molecular and cell biology level. Uh, enzymes used in genetic engineering. When we say genetic engineering, we also call them as recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant uh, DNA technology means that we have DNA from two different origins. We combine those two DNA strands from two different origins and then we allow them to replicate in a, uh, a vector that can be a plasmid, that can be a bacteria, that can be a bacteriophage lambda or it can be a synthetic vector that is called as cosmids. So in recombinant DNA technology we have DNA from two different origins and to get the DNA from two different origins we use a number of enzyme for this purpose. The first enzyme which is used in recombinant DNA technology they are called restriction endonucleases and they are also called as molecular scissors because they are utilized to cut uh, the DNA, foreign DNA into various segments as well as that of the vector which can be a plasmid. So for cutting of uh, vector as well as of the foreign DNA into many segments. And then we need DNA ligase. Ligase means to, uh, means to uh, ligate or uh, for, uh, bind two things together. So DNA ligase functions to bond DNA pieces together. And then the introduction of this recombinant DNA, the DNA which is being obtained from two different uh, uh, original species into the host cell for replication. And for that purpose, we need DNA modifying enzymes. These DNA modifying enzymes can be called as endonucleases or exonucleases. Endonucleases and exonucleases are responsible to break the phosphodiester bond which is present in the DNA structure. Endonucleases, they break the uh, bond, uh, phosphodiester bond within the uh, uh, DNA segment and exonucleases, they break the phosphodiester bond at periphery. Beside this, we also need DNA polymerase 1 and polynucleotide kinases. Uh, which has an important role in filling the gap of phosphorylating the 5 prime end. So these are various enzymes which are being used as research tool in recombinant DNA technology or in genetic engineering. These are the uh, restriction endonucleases which are called molecular scissor, DNA ligase which combines the two pieces of the uh, DNA of different origin and then incorporation of that uh, recombinant DNA into the uh, vector by means of the endonucleases, exonucleases, DNA polymerase 1 and polynucleotide kinases. 
Now this picture shows you the enzyme restriction endonuclease which are also called as molecular seizures and you can see this molecular seizure they are cutting the double stranded DNA strand into a number of segments and this is DNA ligase which is also being uh, used as a uh, research tool in uh, recombinant DNA technology and here you can see we have a segment of vector and a foreign DNA segment and this DNA ligase combines these two in a, a very uh, precise manner so that a recombinant DNA is being formed. 